The spelling rules that we covered in the previous video were uh, quite easy and so you don't have to worry too much about those because you're familiar with them but the ones that are covered here are going to be foreign word plurals um, and this causes a lot of confusion in students so I would strongly recommend that you write these words down take notes and try to commit them to memory let's look at some Latin words the words that I highlighted in blue there are the forms that we're more familiar with they're used more often uh, whereas the it's the other forms in black that we don't know very well and I will try to tell you based on my experience which words are frequently used and which words are not let's look at the word addendum addendum is any part added like some um, written document that has an additional page or something that's an addendum the plural form is addenda usually only one thing is added so you're going to get an addendum that's more common but we should know the uh, plural form alumna alumni or alumni you might pronounce versus alumnus and alumni now these four words are all the same words this the alumnus is your basic masculine singular whereas alumna up here is your feminine singular okay this is where a lot of per people get um this confused because this is a word that's used very commonly to talk about someone who graduated from a certain school um i'm a graduate of ucla um and so i am what I am an alumnus because I am a male but if I have a friend Jane I can't say that Jane is an alumnus of that school because she's not male I have to say properly she's an alumna of that school but in fact no one is going to really talk that way it sounds very pretentious if you do say it correctly and a lot of times people won't even understand what why you're saying it that way and so instead we might try to avoid that issue altogether by kind of circumlocution uh, talking around the subject the more common form that we're going to say is uh, the alumni alumni is the plural is the masculine plural but historically the masculine form includes all females as well and so if you want just the feminine plural you're going to say alumni um, as in Jane and Mary are the alumni of UCLA whereas Jane Mary and I all of us are alumni and that's probably the best way to use this word um, the alumni is almost never used alumna is uh, used in writing when it comes to um, educated writers they'll always get it correct and they'll um, they'll expect you to write these correctly uh, otherwise just don't make the mistake with alumnus and try to go safe with alumni to include everybody in the plural form datum and data is the next word we of course use data uh, to talk about information the actual singular is datum and so in school grammar books this is always listed but in fact common usage has changed so much um, that we don't use the datum anymore or because people don't use the, the word datum we consider data to be the singular and the plural form of the verb this is how language changes over time so what should you do well when you're in a testing situation and you're given the option of choosing the datum as the singular that is the original correct form so you should choose that but in real life you don't have to say datum and you're going to sound really awkward if you say something like oh I have a piece of datum for you or there's a datum that I need to add to this sheet yeah that sounds really weird right so don't do that um, we'll just use this data as the singular plural and you might um, do some research on the internet to see how um, that usage is um, right now it does change over time erratum and irata irata is I think more common because at the end of a book like college board um, SAT book uh, published a, a book the blue one many years ago and it contained many errors in the first edition so they included a sheet 
of paper that I believe it said errata at the top and it listed all the questions in the book that has some form of error in it and you're going to see the word errata because um, there are many errors listed okay let's look at Greek words Greek words analysis analyses basis bases crisis crises and I am emphasizing the pronunciation because you have to pronounce them differently as well the singular SIS is what we're uh, familiar with, like the word parenthesis is one only. But if you're talking about parenthesis going on both sides of a word, if you want to talk about that, together they are the parentheses. You pronounce it ES and you write SES. So the plural form analyses, bases, crises, these are Greek words. Um, this is expected of you, so you do need to use these correctly. Phenomenon versus phenomena, both words are uh, very frequently used and most people use it correctly, so you would be expected to know them. Thesis and theses also follows the rule as the previous words. Other Latin words here. There are three columns here to show you what the original singular word is and to say that in English we have our own plural form that's more common but the original foreign language had a different um, different form. So we have words like apparatus or apparatus if you prefer to pronounce it that way. Uh, apparatus, apparatuses is perfectly fine that's how we would say it. Um, listed under the form plural it says apparatus as well. I wonder if this is not an error on the part of the publisher uh, because the us, us ending in Latin often changes to an I um, but I, but then again I've only I have limited knowledge of uh, Latin grammar so uh, I will defer to their expertise we'll just accept that and the point is pretty moot anyways because we're not going to use that form we're just going to use apparatuses cactus cacti is originally and a lot of people actually use the cacti form but I would say most people majority will just say cactuses curriculum curriculums I guess uh, nowadays we say curriculums some people will say curricula especially in uh, written material and so it is used but not as much formula formulas definitely everybody will say formulas and not formulae or formulae okay. um, hippopotamus I don't think we run into that problem very much medium mediums and media here the original plural would be media versus the medium but in English the definitions have changed a little bit the medium that we should be thinking of here is like this internet or the computer that you're using between you and me this is the medium that we're using um, to transfer information between the two parties if I talk to you over the phone then the phone becomes a medium and so we can talk about all the different mediums that are available to us to communicate with each other we can use our cell phone our landline phone the internet uh, chat services those are different mediums so we'll use that media when we use it is nowadays uh, mostly reserved for the um, the news and the journalists and so forth and so it kind of takes a different meaning when you say the media memorandum memorandums and memoranda um, I would say memorandum singular memoranda I think is used more commonly because uh, these are memos that are sent uh, within companies so if you send a memo to your friend you just say memo if you're going to bother saying the full word memorandum you want to sound very formal and strict and serious so if you're working at Apple and you're sending a message to all the employees you want to sound formal so you say memorandum if there's one but if there are several you're going to say memoranda because it makes you sound more educated Greek words here same thing a singular English plural foreign plural all right automaton automaton is a robot basically Oh, and there shouldn't be an S on that one, I guess. Maybe a typo. So singular is automaton. Uh, English plural, automatons. And 
foreign plural, automata, well, the ton, T-O-N, often changes to the A ending in Greek words. And so that's why we have criterion, criteria. Now, we're never going to say automata, so don't worry about that. We'll use automatons. But when it comes to criterion, it's more common to say criteria, I think. And that would be preferred, um, just like phenomenon and phenomena, most educated uh, writers and speakers are very well aware of the difference and so they might even say you're wrong to say criterion criterions as the plural gymnasium gymnasiums and gymnasia when was the last time you heard gymnasia we're not going to use that we'll use gymnasiums phenomenon phenomenons phenomena I would prefer phenomena I think most people are familiar with that phenomenons I think there are people who are going to say you're wrong to say phenomenons even though a lot of people say it um, and people don't want to seem illiterate and so whenever they can they'll try to find the right word and right form to use it and so I think phenomena would be the preferred choice uh, please refer to your book for more rules there were some minor rules and exercise 6 for the spelling rules uh, they are omitted in the video uh, because they were quite easy and the book that we're using is English Made Simple if you can please go to hopegof.org use the link there to purchase the Kindle version of the book which is only eight dollars